hello guys, this is the first episode of our podcast, who hasn't has a name yet. Um, this is still a test run, so we don't know if we're gonna continue it or not. And it's currently um, almost 1am at midnight on a Saturday, on a Sunday. And um, I'm here with my um, discussion partners who will introduce ourselves. I'm going with my introduction first. My name is Super Mom, and I'm the shit post dumb person on YouTube. Um, you probably know me for my shitty memes as well. And now the others are going to introduce themselves. My name is Avi. And my name is Blen. My name is Dio. All right, I've prepared a couple of questions for our podcast. We will going we will be going to discuss the episode thirty five. And my first question for you is, um, how would you rate the episode on a scale from one to ten, with one meaning it's it's bad and ten meaning it's very good? Um, I would say it. I'd give it a solid. Eight out of ten. I, well, out of all the episodes, this is a solid nine out of ten. Yeah, it's pretty perfect for me. Um, do you want to yeah. comment on why you give it a rating? Um, I, I give it a, a eight out of ten because. Uh, it's like not it's re it's a re it's really good, but some some things are bad, like the death of Narancia and uh, and things uh like that. And there were not actual uh, actual fights in the episode. I mean, there were supposed to be fights, but yeah, that's all I have. I think adaptation-wise, it was very excellent in that regard. Uh, the things that they that DP has added to the story, such as uh, the spooky, scary uh, King Crimson when they were. Uh, running in the corridor was a very nice touch, I think. Uh, the Fugo addition at the end of Narancia's death. Yeah, was that a too. That... Bit of a blow, blow. <laughs> uh, it wasn't in the manga, but it's 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 nice, I guess, uh, that they added it. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciated that. I mean, I will like that. They kind of did a similar thing with Abarjo's death and put uh, Navantria's plane in the sky and Fugo looking at the sky. But I kind of didn't really like the, the Avalo head in the hallway. So it kind of looked, to me, stupid. It was very... Uh, I. When I first saw it, I thought, ooh, is this a scary... You didn't tell me this was a horror show now. I mean, you're not wrong. You get the vibe and stuff. I mean, I kind of felt like... I, I don't know. I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, the the episode is, is good and all. I mean, it, like every JoJo episode... Be, yeah. What about That's... Dopio's? We we talk so much about the orange boy. Dopio. Yeah. Also. Yeah. D Dopio. Uh, Dopio uh, death was actually kind of tragic. I I thought that in this episode they were going to have uh the whole Dopio's final moments, his final thoughts, thinking like go go get him, boss. Well, yeah. They can. I mean, they could still add that. I don't think it happens yet, but 
Yeah, personally, I, I think they will put it into the next episode. So on this episode, we have to focus on Aventia and the stuff. Yeah, because uh, I think that uh, that happens later in the manga, but I'm not completely yeah, um, I think sure. It, it happens at the same yeah, yeah, time yeah. in the manga, but I think they will move it to episode 36. So um, we can have Doppio's final moment separated from the Aventia stuff. So we yeah. have more of them equally. I mean, that you, that okay. episode was probably like focused on Narancia. Yeah, and I think they probably would put Doppio's death at the end, and it wouldn't make any sense for me because then um we wouldn't be able to suffer properly. Yeah, well, we we would get sense. confused. Yeah, I think it would be too much for one episode. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, I personally think this is one of the better episodes from part 5, but um, I really have to say that I respect the voice actors for delivering their performance on the characters. Like, you can really tell that they are trying to speak like the other character. Um, for example, John on the rancher, like, um, John on speaking like a child was, like, disturbing me all the time when I watched the episode. I don't know how you guys feel about the performance, but um, I think it's really great. And um, in the credits, they are also mentioned as the other character. For example, Jono's um, voice actor is mentioned as a rancher and stuff. Yeah, um, there's the voice actors of the characters really tried so hard to imitate the speaking uh, style of the other characters. The cadence, the uh, yeah. Well, that was highly appreciated. Yeah, I think the for example, was a big part. for example, Diablo was like one good example because you just see his um his green eyes who look like Bruno's eyes and he's like talking very calm and wearing a button rancher and stuff. Yeah, but uh, like um. The way uh, the way Bruno was to- was talking from from um, Diablo's uh, body was like pretty not uh, Bruno type. It al- it almost felt that it almost felt like it was uh, completely Diablo. Diablo had a very iconic uh, voice actor. I feel he has a very unique voice. It was hard to portray Bruno in that way. Everybody else, like, uh, the, the mist, everyone kept making jokes about it. Mista's voice actor, uh, sounded very gay, as everyone was saying, very feminine. I mean, um, he's not, his voice is not really feminine or anything. But the way of speaking I'm... when being Trish was, uh, I mean, if you if you really think about it, it's not really uh, easy to imitate a girl's voice than a man's voice. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, if, is that all you guys have? The voice, the voice acting was a big part of it, but the animation as well. The way that uh, they hold their their facial expressions, like the way that uh, Giorno immediately when becoming Narancia, uh has more of like a wide-eyed, relaxed face. Um, by the way, uh, the DP really is trying so hard to like make the, the anime better than the manga. Um, they probably are. Yeah. And I think they probably all spent a budget, and that's why we had like three episodes. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but we, also had, had, we also had episodes where the animation budget was like way worse. For example, I think the fight with Squalo and Tiziano was one example where the animation was a bit um choppy, or like episode three with Black Sabbath. Oh, yeah, if you remember that one. But yeah, they've yeah. been really stepping up their game in the latest episode. So, if I had to guess, they started 
spending less money and they started spending more and more and more and spent it and they probably gonna spend it the most on the last two episodes I, if I had to guess yeah you also, have to, yeah, you also have to keep in mind that you um, have to pay the voice actors and for part 5 they really got some very famous voice actors even like from the squadra or um, Sale, they had really, um, they took voice actors who were really well known for their voices and can be linked to characters from other anime. Yeah, like, uh, like the, the, like, uh, what was his name? Yeah, Bakugo's voice. Yeah, he is, um, Gacho and John, he, uh, and Jojo. And we um, cannot also forget about the music production and producers and musicians oh, and I, the... I know and we still haven't got the third volume of there are still some themes we haven't heard of yeah i think um the part three volume was like um supposed to come out um this week i think but it got rescheduled for august yeah. But um, probably some tracks, for example, are the death track we heard in the episode of Abakio stuff, as well as Risato's theme. And um, we might also hear Ponorev's theme on that one, and maybe also a theme for Requiem, like the one we heard when um, Chariot took the arrow and t transformed into Requiem. Or when Turtle Ponorev was holding the arrow in episode 35. Yeah, there, are, the there are some good uh, themes uh, that people uh, mainly forget about. Uh, like what? Um, like you like, mean well? Uh, like why? Like Bruno's uh, theme. Uh, you mean uh, people don't uh, don't focus on it uh, that much. It, you mean it does not like not appear that much, but it's but it's really good, by the way. You mean like uh, first uh, fierce battle when he first time when he fought uh, against uh, Diablo, or you mean the original one? No, I mean I mean uh, Bruno has his own theme, like uh, you... if you fo if you focus on the if you focus on the music and the fight between uh, between him and uh, Pesci. Uh, you will you will hear a different music, like a Bruno's own theme. I think uh, that theme was also heard during his fight against uh, Zukeo, but I'm not sure. I don't really remember. Kind of forgot. I think he actually has two different versions, like the one, um, you for, for example, you could hear it when um, Diablo used sticky fingers to attack Chariot and the arrow in episode 34, I think. And thing, another just, example yeah. would be when he is facing Diablo for the first time in the church. Uh -huh. So he has like a fierce version of it, I think it's called Fierce Fight or something. And it's basically a remix version of his original theme, so he basically has two themes. Wait. Gee, Bruno, how come mom lets you have two themes? Um, I think John is probably going to get another theme for you know what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna spoil it for anime only viewers who are listening to this, but um, I mean, I'm pretty it... sure he's gonna get another theme or another version of his theme. Well. If yeah. you have to be correct, that theme is really not for him, but for something else we won't talk about. What is everyone's favorite La Squadra member theme? Um... Well, if I have to say, probably Precious. Yeah, I have to agree on that. Oh, that's... A, that's... Mine, guess. mine uh, gotta be uh, mine gotta be a uh, got you. That's a good one. I'd say I'm a loner. 
I'm still sitting with Dash. I mean, I mean, he's he's kind of OP. I mean, it's not just because of his team, but he's uh, he's all, I would say. I mean, if you had to look at Pesci, he was, uh, I could say, scared kick who after after his uh, after that of prosciutto. He became real member of Squadra. Like his full potential kind of unleashed. Yeah. I think he can be kind of compared to Seiko. Like they both had someone who was very important for them. And then when that person died, they showed their true identity. In case of Pesci, we can see that he's actually trying to kill someone and in, intending to kill Bruno as well. And for Seiko's case, we also see him talking more seriously and destroying the camera and saying that he's gonna kill the rest of the gang. I mean, when he did that with a total, like, I was kind of disappointed, but from the most part, Bruno was kind of like, it was a dick move. That comparison of, uh, I mean, and, and Pesci, that's, I kind of like that. Yeah, same. What are, like, how do they contrast with each other, then? Like, the difference between how they react to death. Um, I think the thing with the difference between them is that um I think Seiko was like more like shy for chocolata. Like if you compare Pesci and Seiko, um Pesci was like more um talkative and even if he was like um a crybaby, how they call them with the Italian word, um he was still trying to catch up to the other members and taking part in the mission and trying to get acceptance within the squadra, but Seku was still, like just blindly following Chocolata. Yeah, um I but but on the other hand, Seku by the way is just looking for killing for fun. He, he just wants to kill to satisfy his desires. But like pe uh, Pesky um he he just wants to have his place in the in the team. Pesci was looking for independence. Seko was fine with uh and kind of almost needed that dependence from Chocolata. Yeah, yeah he, he he needed he needed to follow someone or something like that. He just Mm, he just needed to follow someone and have someone lead him or something like that. But but in the end, that wasn't true. He he actually betrayed Chocolata. I mean, when did when did he do that? I mean, uh. You uh, probably just, uh, just after he... just after he knew that Chocolata died, he he kept uh, he kept screaming and saying, "You were weak after all. I did not need you. I did not love you," and stuff like that. So Chocolata failed him for not being strong. Um, no, no, yes. I meant I meant no. I meant Seko. Yeah, I meant Seko. He. he 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 uh he did not he did not he betrayed Chocolata. Chocolata's already dead. Why well, how can he betray him? Um, well I think okay. that he that he just made those um reactions up because I'm... you know sometimes you in real life you tend up to say something when you're really mad about something and then you don't mean it like that. It's like your emotions are controlling you and you can't do anything against it. So sometimes you get some like of rage attack and say something which you doesn't which you don't mean, you know? And but I like in I this mean, case, he was like very mad that Chocolata got killed, and 
um, he was trying to find revenge and said those things to the others, like that he didn't love him. Saying it for his own sake, so... I mean, but we're talking about himself. an anime here. Uh, trying to convince himself he didn't actually care. We, so. ha we have seen... We have seen people, we have seen characters all over the series get seriously mad after knowing that their partner has died. I mean, really mad in the way that they want to avenge him instantly. I mean, kind of like metallic, but he was like more of a frenemy than an enemy, if you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, totally. There are two ways to look at the Sekiro suffer a lot of death situation then. There is Sekiro being uh, grieving and trying to deflect the pain of that feeling by saying that he didn't actually care for him and that he uh, was mad as a way to cover up that pain. Or there's taking him at his word that he actually was only there uh, for Chocolata because he uh, felt like he could trust, like he put his dependence on him because he was powerful and felt betrayed by the fact that he was not strong enough. I mean, yeah. um, uh, what I wanted to say was what we have to think about what Chocolata did for him. Why did he let him live? Uh, and what did Seko go to to deserve life by Chocolata? Look, because when... Seko, Seko thought that Chocolata was strong enough to protect him and protect himself. After knowing that he died, he, he, he felt he's been lied to and he's been betrayed. Yeah, that's what I was... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do we want to go back to episode 35? Um, <laughs> and discuss any rants because we... No, no, so... no, we don't want to do more. Excuse us. Yeah, it's fine. I think we're only first episode, so I think we can also freely discuss any other topics. I mean, we'll yeah. see if the people like it, so... Yeah, remember it's a test run. And um, guys, if you're listening to this, you can leave a comment. Um, if you want us to focus on one episode only, or if you prefer we talk freely about anything, just leave a comment, and we will see what we can do in the future. Um, yeah, and excuses. I still got some other questions. Um, and the next one actually is um, how much impact did Narancia's death have on you in the anime version compared to the manga version? And excuse us if we pronounced any of the any of the characters' names in a wrong way that triggered you or something. And I, I know for a fact I cannot say chocolate for the life of me. I also apologize. And my English is not my first so sorry. Yeah, so back to the question, um, how much impact did Narendra's death had, had to you uh, in the anime version compared to the manga version? Was it worse or was it not as worse as this new, as a new manga? No, it, it, was, it was pretty bad to me. Like, it, it, it hit me pretty much differently uh, on, a whole, on a whole another level other than the manga. Uh, well, if I had to say, I mean, seeing seeing the action, seeing the action uh, of their actions, of the of the characters, of the t of Bruno's mem of Bruno's team, it's it's just if it just plays with your emotions. Well, if I had to say. Seeing the team in despair, um, Jono in both bodies and Jono crying, which wasn't really manga. And the new scenes added by DP, like Fugo looking at the 
Sky. Like, I feel like Fugo kind of felt that Navancha was gone. And he kind of um, knew that he was going to die. I mean, I don't know how to explain, but when Navancha was, uh, was swimming to the boat, he said love, uh, something like that. And what really most hit me was seeing the Navancha's stand last time in the clouds where the last time saw a buck. Um, yeah, that also hit me hard. Um, what I kind of disliked in the anime version is I was really hoping that they would do a King Crimson cut when Narencia got stabbed on the Iron Bars because um, I was hoping that they would like um, not show anything of Narancia at all and then they do a King Crimson cut in the anime and then you see him on the iron bars and, uh, and um, I imagined every anime only viewer going like holy shit what the fuck did just happen and I mean yeah you felt it was confusing like it, uh I mean but thing. but you see but you see the the frame uh, the frame cut in the the frame cut in the anime it's pretty it's yeah, pretty obvious see, but i wish they would have like postponed that to the point where he got stabbed so it would have more effect on you so because yeah they were hinting if they added that he already well, he was already dead but other than i mean that, i really like the adaption especially the scene with aerosmith turning into a bird who comes up into the sky but i also got um a question later on where we can discuss that scene in particular I, I mean, kind of, uh, I liked not showing the death where it was mostly just everyone, just the chaos of everyone kind of having their own conversations and being distracted. Like the whole, I think the worst part of that scene in the manga for me was uh, Mista getting hyper fixated on the four, like, please drop another one, please drop another one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And while but like, he's hyper fixated on that, while Narach is literally dead next to him. I mean, I kind of have to agree with you, Obi. It would it would have been more oh, it would have been more better, I guess, to me, if if Trish took the took the bullet and literally just smashed it in the in the ground so hard that it shattered, and started screaming at Mista on on how. He is concerned about the four bullets, other than that, uh, that Narancia is dead. But that will kind of um, ruin it for me because, I mean, I know DP tries to be accurate to the manga, but that will be too much of the. How do I say it? I mean, uh. That will be for me way off of the manga. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, um, but it it I mean it will it would be it, it would be fit together because I mean Trish is a girl and she she would be enraged about that. But on the other hand, she has a very uncomfortable time and misses body, as you can see. And she's also trying to speak like she's a bit disgusted by his appearance. So I think she even has a, has a worse time than Mr. because she is like in a boy's body and his body is like not very well, not very hygienic because she mentioned that he has like stuff as facial hair on his fingers and shit like that. I always thought that that was just her being a, a priss. It wasn't actually him being that bad. Being that gross. Wait, are we talking about the reaction to death? Right? 
Yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um. I but mean, like, we kind of side thought. But now, uh, now, uh, now, is this. Uh, um. Was pretty, pretty bad. It was. It was really unexpected. Um. Yeah, I think. Um. Also, like. The, the the way of how the Avalor killed him was like very bad. Like I mean, he could have just donut punched him, um, like he did with Bruno in the church, but he, he, could, yeah, he just went to pretty brutal. and he decided to put his body up into the iron bars, um, punch the iron bars and like stab him multiple times. That's so I bad. mean, yeah, like it's it's super brutal. I mean, if if I can say something. Uh, the the way Awaki did it, it was more in path in path to in in path. Someone said it was more uh, impact. I yeah, would say also, because Narendra probably if... had way more pain when he died. Like if you get stabbed by multiple iron bars to go through your body, you probably instantly die without picking up anything. Like, for example, when Abakio got donut punch, he had like 10 seconds left where he could. Hit I mean, I mean but, uh, like, he, he took the bars in his head and his chest and yeah, pretty much he, every place in his head, in his body. Died. Yeah. I kind of felt like that. Uh, you know, when Abakio died and Jono said he couldn't feel him. Uh, heal him, but in reality, I kind of feel like he could, and he could have done the same thing though now and then, but he didn't really want to want them to go to the same thing that Bruno has to go to. Yeah, but I think it would be a bad plot de device if Jono can revive dead people. I know some anime only viewers are going to say, but Bruno survived, but that's another story, and I think it's going to be explained in the anime at the end why he didn't die, and why Narantia and Dabakio died. But I really think if he could just survive, revive anyone who dies, like it wouldn't be serious anymore. Apart from but I mean. As as we see in the anime, um, like when when Giorno um, revives revives a Bruno, it, Bruno starts to die slowly, like he's he he's already dead. But like, he mean... starts to uh, he starts to turn into a uh, into an empty shell. Well. Uh, his soul left his body, but he soul returned. So it wasn't but really. I mean, this. I mean, like Jorno got uh, got there in the right time. So, like when Abakio died, they got there late. So Jorno, no, he he wasn't able to do anything. Okay, you have a point. Yeah, and for the rest, the point then was... died instantly. Yeah, but um, the point was uh, he was stuck in the iron bar since they had to put him down there and Jono had to walk up to him and it was basically already too late for him. Yeah. Yeah. So time was erased and they couldn't do anything in advance. And for Bruno's case, he just got a donut punch. Like, no time was erased or anything. Yeah. yeah. Yavolo finally learned how to instant kill someone. Don't donut. Also, um, the others mentioned in episode 34 that they got a power up with Requiem, so King Crimson probably got a Requiem power up as well. Okay, I... wait, when? That's a good point. Yeah, they did mention that they wait, have a power up. Wait, yeah. when did when did when did I'm... King Crimson uh, get the ability? Uh, I'll get the the screen time for him to stab himself with the arrow. I mean, he he no, doesn't have... 
it happened off screen, but like it, because it happened in a race time. But in episode 34, when when um Cherry and Requiem appeared, they all stated that they got a power up. Six Pistol said they felt stronger and they were able to hit um multiple iron bars in defense. Arancho, no, no I, I, my point, my point is. How can how can how can he stab him? Uh, how can he stab himself while um while the arrow was with was with the uh, requiem? No, um, he did not stab himself with the requiem arrow. He got a power up like the others did because they were in range of requiem. Uh -huh. Because um, chariot requiem is global. When everyone did the soul swap, yeah, yeah, his his power. range is pretty. Naranchev was able to uh, was able to have a faster plane. Uh, Mista was able to shoot more, and I guess with Requiem, either its uh, time duration was able, or the time duration was able to, to do extend more than just a single punch. Yeah, and I be think able to do something um, he like probably... break a bar and place a person on a bar. Yeah, I think he probably break the bar with one punch, but we can't tell because it happened off screen and the reproduction didn't animate it. So I think it's up to our imagination how we killed him. Yeah, he he could he the the time the period of the time skipping, uh, could have been extended. So so like. King Crimson was able to punch through the boards and put Nara and Narancia into the boards. I mean, but that would um, really make a lot of sense because um, King Crimson. When I look at his stats, he's really powerful, but um. And, uh, he can really stay out uh, long. I don't know how. He, his durability is low, so a boost in his durability will make. So for the he also has King... like um, a D in range, like two to three meters. Is also mentioned by Bruno. I mean, most sense that his time skipping ability gets a power up and. At the end. So the first two uh, deaths by uh, King Crimson, Bruno and Abakio. Bruno was able to be revived quickly enough because Giorno was there, but it was still a slow death. Abakio had a slow death, but Giorno was not able to make it there in time. The Rancia death, it had a power. It had a power up from Requiem uh, Silver Chariot. So that means that. Uh, he was able to not only just do a donut, but have a more instant death than just a slow death that the other two had before. Yeah, he, prob he probably just punch uh, punched him uh, and did the donut thing, and then punched th through the bars, broke them, and put Narancia into the bars. So that was probably an instant death. You have to realize that they both knew that they would switch bodies, so um, because he was aiming for Jono's body, or he was trying to kill Jono and he actually killed Narantia and was like, Oh shit, that's not what I wanted to do. I thought in the, in the manga they had said that, uh, oh, they took out Narantia, he took out Narantia because, uh, because, oh yeah, be oh yeah, no. uh, because, because he wanted to, yeah, to uh, take out the person who can track him. Yes. So um, we could probably assume that the next person he would want to take out is the one. Jono. Can... No, but yeah, Jono and he Bish... he 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 has an order like Narancia, the the person who can track him after uh, after he shows himself, uh, his self. And then, um, like, um, Trish, he wants to kill her, um, probably because she can feel his presence, if he's nearby or not. But then after so. he kills Trish, he then, he goes on to Giorno, the person who can 
who can has have the power to kill him and he who is the biggest obstacle to him yeah, and I mean, also because Jono can heal the others, so that's why he wants to kill him as soon as possible, and he's also so, higher up on the skill list. So, yeah. um, we can only presume that he won't kill Bruno because he is in his original body, and... Our next thing we're going to discuss is the extra scene David Pro added at the end, with Aerosmith turning into a bird and Fugger watching the sky. Um. How did you like that scene, and um, did you feel like it made the anime version better or not? Yeah, it, well, it kind of made the anime... It kind of... It, that scene, that particular scene, kind of made, made me feel like Fugo felt that Narencia died, and he, and he felt the... And he, the expression on his face was like... That fool went to the wrong path, and I warned him, and he did not listen to me. Well, I don't believe that. I don't think he knew he had died. I, I mean, he, I meant he was, had the feeling. Oh. I think he had just uh, he was reminded of Narancia. I think he was just thinking, oh, hey, it kind of looked like him for a second. Yeah, kind of. I think it was something like, I wonder what he's doing right now. He's probably sleeping or fighting against the boss or something. Or being bad at math. Yeah, probably something like that. I wish they would have added a line for Fugo, but I think it might have been hard to get a voice actor back for one line because they have to pay them and stuff. Yeah. And, or maybe the voice actor was booked already and they couldn't get him. We don't know. I mean, what I have to say, because I really like that scene, because Fugo was kind of forgotten in manga. I mean, yeah. there was... Yeah, he did not He did not appear again after he left, he left the, them when they were leaving the island. Yeah. He did not appear again. But if I remember correctly, Araki wanted Frigo to come back at a later point in the story, and then they wanted he wanted him to fight against Jono with Jono killing Frigo at the end, but he wasn't no, afraid to uh, draw it or something. No, no, that that was not the at the end. Uh, he was supposed to be a traitor since the uh, beginning. I remember I read that. He was supposed to no. aid, uh, the Apple. No, he was uh, supposed to be traitor from the beginning, but uh, he scrubbed that idea because it was too dark. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, you have to remember that part 5 was still going on in the Gem magazine for 3 years, and Araki didn't plan out the story for the end, probably. And then at the end, Araki was like, nope, I'm not gonna add him back. That's why there is such a huge gap in the manga where he doesn't appear. I mean, uh, if he had said that part five was like almost a therapy for him, uh, he was going. Araki was going through a depressive time, and he said he had grown an attachment to the whole uh, Vigilante crew. So I mean, uncomfortable with something that dark. Well, if I had to say, if he had him at the end and said I was walking for the bus and yeah, the other that. Wouldn't really feel like satisfying. That would feel like unexpected, like lazy writing. Yeah. Also, also, like JoJo is not that kind of a dark title. It it's just a kind of a fighting anime and a shonen anime, but like not not that kind that type of anime that t takes a dark turn. It's I supposed to be like fighting and uh, like uh, just uh, the Joe the stars taking turns in their own stories. I would disagree. But, yeah. That was a, a, the entire part five. Every, a lot of people have barely, like, there was straight up child abuse in the first. Uh, 
for Giorno's story. Uh, Narancia's was pretty bad, and Fugo had straight up sexual assaults. Uh, I disagree with the idea that dark subjects can't be tackled in JoJo. I mean, especially in this part. Um, in late, uh, um, a more how, how to say later there are more darker subjects, but we won't go into detail. Um, what I also want to add when we are talking about the past of the characters, I think the part five cast actually is more memorizable because of their past. Because um, in part 3, for example, we barely got any flashbacks of characters. Um, Kakuin got one before he died, but um, I think the characters in part 5 feel real, like real persons almost because they got flashbacks when they got introduced in their arcs and their stands. Actually, ev every, pers every person in the Bruno team like got their own flashback. Like Abakiel got his own flashback. Narancia got his own flashback. Fugo got his own flashback, and like Giorno got his own flashback, and so on. And we got that at the beginning, or whenever they're they first. I mean, started to become personal with Gio. Like, I mean, uh, we instead of at the this... end whenever uh, Kakyoin died, and we only found out his loneliness with being a stand user and everything right as he was dying and it was like oh you were holding out on me i i could have understood this person in a lot better way i had trouble with part three because i they i couldn't distinguish them personality wise beyond uh Polnareff being uh uh a perv Yeah, and I yeah. think Part 5 is doing a great job at introducing the characters and the flashbacks. It makes them, like, you, you feel with them because you know they've had a hard time and now they're all together and they all share the same fate. Yeah. I mean, if I had to say, uh, of all the anime parts we had until now, Part 5 is got to be the best part, the story. The background, even the um, even even uh, theme, how this the whole narrative theme. Yeah, of, and the idea of uh... like, can we can we appreciate on part five about how the the how the story took. A serious, a seriously short turn into being a, uh, into being a gang, a gangster and Italian mafia story, and stuff like that. Like not, not the same storyline of an of a of the other JoJo stories. Uh, trying, uh, trying like to avenge to avenge the their ancestors, and stuff like that. It was one of the f uh, few JoJo's where they they had chosen they had chose uh, chosen to go on their quest. It was something instead of uh, thrust upon them, like uh, with Jotaro, he had they had just said, "Hey, this is going on with your mom." He was uh, forced into that situation. With uh, Joseph, he was able he was given the he was thrust into that situation without him choosing to. Gio was like, straight up, I'm going to I'm going to join a gang now. No one can stop me. This is happening. He had a yeah. lot more uh and the whole what? dichotomy between uh Diablo and Giorno, the way that they interact with each other, the way everyone's personality seems to connect with their stands seems a lot more like the explanation that their stands are their souls, like an extension of their soul. It was hard for me to see how uh, Polnareff's soul connected with Sword Boy, or how uh, Kekyoin's soul 
uh, related to uh, the abilities of Hierophant Green, but I can see a lot more in how they interact with their backstories with the Part 5 characters. And uh, speaking of against us, the part uh, Jonah took and followed makes a lot of sense, and because he's, I would say, son of Jonathan and Theo. I mean, technically, he has his good side and bad side. And speaking of that, I kind of consider uh, John or Jesus in this story. Cause he's literally the son of Dio. Yes, he's a son of God, and Jesus also fought against the devil. By the way, if, and... you, if you guys didn't know, Dio means... God in in Italian. I I, I know also, that. I was gonna say that. Yeah. Also, Diablo means devil in Italian. So, point of reference, both God and devil. Yeah. I or if I uh, the devil and uh and on the staircase below God and below God on the staircase. Yeah. Basically, basically the uh, basically. The uh he he is rogue. He's he's not on any side. What? I'm talking about Polaner. He is rogue. I mean, I mean he means that. I should allow you. I meant that like. He isn't. He's not in on any side. He's not on the devil's side. He's not. On God's side, he, he is, he's just rogue. Fighting for, uh, fighting for what's good or some, or if you understand me. Well, okay. Yeah, um, so we are going, we were also talking um, about part 5, but we should be going back to the episode again. Um, because yeah. I was planning to do um, another podcast for the entire part 5 anime when it got adapted, when we can talk more about our favorite episodes and stuff. But um, I think um, the scene with Aerosmith and Fugger at the end was like my favorite scene so far in all of part 5, because... You could see the stylistic devices they use with Aerosmith and the bird and Fugiro looking up. And um, I don't know what you guys think about that scene, but I think it's like the best scene anime only wise that David Production has added to all of JoJo. I mean, I would strongly if say, I, yeah. I mean, if I had to say, they took a lot of inspiration from Purple Haze uh, feedback. Uh, I think we leave all discussions of that for the end. Okay. Is this the end? Um, we're close to hitting the end. Um, but I think that the and the additional scene doesn't go well with Purple Heist feedback because um I'm going to slide. I mean, uh, I um, I wanted to people. say his uh, backstory uh, was yeah. inspired by Purple Haze feedback. Yeah, they kind of changed it in the anime with, um, because, um, I think I can say this without any major spoilers, but, um, for all of you who haven't read Purple Haze Feedback, the novel, which was not written by Araki, um, but was illustrated. Yeah, but he was, like, not writing the story. Um, some other guy wrote the story, and in Purple Haze Feedback, the reason why Fuguro hit the professor at university was because his mother got, his grandmother got sick. And he was having a test on that day, and he asked if he can cancel the test. And then the professor was like, "You're pathetic. Why are you asking to cancel the test?" And then, of of course, he failed the test, and he was so mad that he hit the professor. While in the anime version, they made it seem like Fugo was like being abused by a pedophile who was working at university. And by the way, the flashback hasn't even been adapted into the manga. It was like anime only, so it was up to David Production's choice on how to perform on that. 
But yeah, we yeah. can also have another um podcast about board players feedback. But um the last scene with Fugo we had episode thirty five doesn't really go well with Purple feedback because um I'm not going into much detail here, but on Purple Ice feedback the flashback with Fugo and Arrange here is slightly different. And um it happens after part five and we also get to see some of his reactions and they don't go well with the scene they showed in the anime. So if they are going to adapt it one day, they probably have to sell it as an alternate version of part 5, because some things that happen in the novel just contradict themselves with the anime events. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I feel like it wouldn't be hard to change some of the things in Purple Haze feedback to align with the anime it would be uh minor details like that that wouldn't uh conflict narratively yeah but we can keep purple eyes feedback for another podcast yeah yeah i haven't read that yet yeah so i hope i didn't spoil anything for the viewers here it's just like the flashbacks are different in the anime um... and in the novel I mean, we can cut it out, so. I don't think that's necessary. She didn't say anything. Yeah, I think it's fine. Um, so do you May want to say anything else about the episode or the last scene we got to see? No. Um, I just, I just want... want... I just have I just one have... thing. Wait, is it echo again? Never mind. I, I just wa I just wanted to say. Is it fixed? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I okay. wanted to say. Hey, Abdo. Can you just worry, mute your mic? That. Okay, I'll, can Abdul can 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 just Aldo. mute his mic, please? please. Yeah, sure, but you should unmute him after that, so you can understand him. Okay, I just wanted to mention that they kinda made Bolnar with Speedwagon of Part 5, because he had to explain what, what happened with the Diavolo and Doppio situation. Previously on JoJo. The person. But like, I mean, he was, wasn't Paul Nerf in, in, the, in the Speedwagon Foundation already? Yeah, like he was researching the errors and collecting them. Yeah, I mean, he should have been connected with Speedwagon Foundation. Yeah, but they didn't knew about Persona because, um, you know, originally Koichi was like trying to get Jono, um, in contact with the Speedwagon Foundation, but Jono was like afraid of them and he didn't want to show them anything, so he kept, um, he kept chat about Persona, and Koichi never got to know that he was actually trying to go for a mafia. Because imagine Koichi would have told Jotaro that there's like a mafia with stand users in Italy, Jotaro would have beat everything of them up. He probably would have um taken a plane and then he would like over over all persona members at once. Like not really. It w it would have been Jotaro's story. That's not why. not like uh not like Jono's story. Yeah. That's why Jorno had said, like, hey, can you please not, like, just, he kept uh, Koichi in the dark about that. Yeah, Koichi I mean, didn't even knew that he was taking an entrance of exam. Uh, at least Koichi explained to him the stand he was against, so. Yeah, because Koichi was always already an experienced stand user, and Jorno was like, wait, the thing I have is called a stand? And I can punch people with that. That's weird. I think uh, 
Didn't Bruno say? I mean, yeah, like, this is a stand. Stands, stands, stands are first known as evil spirits. Like, they were mentioned first as evil spirits. But then we learned that they are they are man a manifestation of uh, self will and stuff like that, and also that they require harmful breathing, and that was quickly cut out. I, th I, I mean, I don't think uh, Jono learned about learned that it was called a stand from Koichi though. I'm pretty sure Bruno oh. said, yeah, no, I'm Bruno attacking you. From this. Bruno, because when they met yeah. in the train, Bruno was like, oh, you're a stand user, and Jono was like, wait, what am I? Yeah. Koichi explained that it was an um, automatic stand, so the user will feel no effect. Yeah. But, um, probably, I like... That, I don't think that's necessary. I think he would have uh finished off black sabbath and then uh then like by the way popo's stand is one is one of the only is one of the only stands that are uh, automatic we have seen so far um, I think, uh... isn't uh, isn't like uh, kiva's uh unknown that was uh... I was yeah, thinking she about uh, Kiva's. It's like automatic, uh, but. Um, but it's kind of like a substance. Yeah, I always thought it's it was also substance. another automatic. Yeah, but, but I don't... Um, keep in mind that we, we have to talk about the part 5 anime when everything is over, then I'm going to make another podcast, so we shouldn't take away all of the events here. Um, is yeah. there anything. Uh, can, I, can I talk about something out yeah, of sure. the whole. The whole context and of the episode 35 yeah go ahead if you want to add anything before we stop okay um i just wanted to add that uh it's not really it's not really something of that importance but like it's about that purple haze I can't just deflect, deflect the emerald splash. I'm not meme. I'm not just posting or anything, but I'm talking for real. Like purple haze can't deflect the emerald splash. Wait, is that a thing? Wait, what? I yeah, the, it... the can't deflect uh, emerald splash is a meme because. It was a common thing that Kakuin said, but it happened all the time. What do you mean by? I mean, la haze? no, no. I am, I am talking for real. Like, it, purple haze can't deflect the emerald splash. It, it it's only, it's only power. Is to, is to, is to put a virus in living things, but uh, em emeralds are not, are not uh, something that has life in them. And and it does not have have the uh, have the power to uh, like break emeralds. So Kakyo so it... is the only one that would be able to beat Fugu. Yeah. Yeah, his is pretty long distance as well. Well, Kakyo I didn't even consider that. Thanks for the random fact. Yeah. 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 yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It just came across my mind. That's a weird fact, but we are also educating our viewers. Is there anything any of you want to add? I do. But this the soundtrack made me cry. Yeah, especially I think the the song at the end when Jono turned Narantia's um body into flowers, like he covered the body into flowers when that a song played, that was really hard for me. <laughs> I think they also sang Requiem in that song. I don't know about that one, but I think it really fits because Requiem basically means Song of the Dead. Requiem means oh, Song of the Dead? Yeah, kind of, or that song. I, don't know. I mean, uh, it's kind of similar. I kind of listened to the 
uh, full version. Straight to things. Yeah, I'm looking forward when they release the third volume because that song is probably on there. I, I, I'm just thinking about the difference of reaction between Abakio's death and Naranch's death. Mista was like almost uh, disassociating. He um he. I mean, uh, kind of Requiem. He had kind of shut down emotionally when Abakio had died, but he uh, was very dramatic compared to Naranchia. Uh Everyone. By the way, I want to add something. Um, Requiem means mass death. In, like in in Latin, Latin. Uh, in Latin, it's requiem mass. Yeah, in, I wasn't too in... sure about the translation, but um, in terms of the death of Abakio, I think that everyone was trying to calm down and uh, not overreact about his death because of Narancia, because he was crying all the time and. I feel like the others were trying to force themselves not to cry or not to cry any harder than he did to make it more comfortable for him. Oh no. And also on the other hand you have to consider that um Jonah was no uh Mr. was way more close to Narancia, so his death probably hit him even harder and they had switched body and stuff, they were in the end game, they were fighting against the boss and then all your emotions just come up. And they lost an yeah, important but, member of the But like the tit the title of the episode it's it's uh it's the requiem plays quietly. If yeah, if I you think, tr if you I think they... if you think about it it's yeah. it means death plays quietly. Yeah, I think quietly is because his death was kinda unexpected. I mean um, I think the anime kind of destroyed the um the sudden event here because they added Narancia saying I want to go back to school I will ha I will protect Trish and I'm gonna be strong I will defeat the boss easily and then I will go back and so and they didn't but add that in the manga they did it they it they did add it later in the game when he died. But um, I think they shouldn't have added it in the anime version because then it becomes kind of obvious that he is about to bite the dust. It was his last. Like it was, um, it was he was two days to like retirement. He was two days until retirement. He was gonna go. It just uh, like in movies, how you know someone is going to die. I agree with that yeah when the person gets more and more screen time and then they say stuff like the next time i will be back i will be protecting you and stuff then you just know okay it's over you know that a guy um, is going to die in a war film if he's looking at like a picture of his wife and kids yeah that's like <laughs> especially stereotyped but i think they should have removed that scene in the anime because it made it too obvious in my opinion like in the manga there was nothing of this if i remember correctly it was just like it happened out of nowhere and i was like holy fuck did he really die <laughs> yeah i i kind of agree with that i feel like the manga yeah that that's that scene in the manga it was like too sudden or if you ask me. Yeah. I I yeah, feel I like the, uh, because I was reading it, I the whole chaos of everyone talking at once, like uh Bruno's saying like, Hey, wait, what's 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 going on? How did that happen? He's over there. Uh everyone kind of running around in chaos and Mr. saying Trish <laughs> dropping up a bullet felt a lot more when reading. Yeah, but I think like yeah, I said, I think, think the anime should have not included the scene with going back to school and stuff. Then it would have been perfect for me. Yeah. But so, does any one of you want to add anything more about the episode? I mean, I found something. 
I really like what happened to the other people, like a baby caressing a big child. I mean, you know, like when mother and baby switch places and yes. yeah. My my favorite part was when the police officers reached swords with the bird, and he was like laying in the car making bird sound. That was like, like uh, what what really triggered me is when is when that uh, is when the cop uh, got his soul swapped with the criminal like i got so triggered he the criminal just got out of the police car and he and he like started looking for women to rape them and when and when he find his first victim, it was that woman that got her soul swapped with her baby. Am, am, I... Oh. Oh God! Wait, what? It no, no, no! That's no, don't, super don't. messed up. Did that happen? Wait. Um, I think you're remembering it wrong because I think he was aiming for Trish, and Trish was actually Mister, and Mister shot him, and he was like trying yes. to rape. Who was in Mr. Spuddy? No, I mean, I mean, like when, uh, like when he got out of the car, he he saw that woman that her that got swept, uh, that swept her so that her soul got swept with her baby. He he handcuffed her, and and then he he saw Trish. And just left her and aimed for aimed for Trish. Wait, are we saying in the manga he had um, first gone for the baby woman? I think it was woman? like this in the manga, but it cut in the anime. Oh, um, that's yeah, it have, was, yeah, it was in the manga, by the way. He, uh, yeah, it was cut from God, the anime. From... Yeah, so um, we also have to remember that part five takes place um in the 90s like it was written in at the end of the 90s so 2002 yeah it takes place in 2001 which was it was written in 1995 to 1997 so um it's we have to expect that some sometimes the Rocky is up for some disturbing shit but yeah does yeah. any one of you want to add anything more no I think I don't have anything to add. I mean, about, about how much uh, recording do we have for all at the moment? How much? I mean, shouldn't we discuss the the manga, uh, the manga of part five, like the rest and the yeah, and the thing yeah, and the part separate podcast? But um, this um, this information that I now give might be incorrect for the viewers because we are cutting something out here. But we are currently at one hour and twenty minutes recording, so. How much okay, okay. Yeah, that's a lot. How much uh time were you wanting from the podcast? Um I it's it's I, okay if we do more time, but I was like I thought that we would like run out of topics after thirty minutes, but you guys seem very talkative, so I think <laughs> it's fine. We um to the viewers, um what do you think would be the perfect length? You can leave a comment down below if and tell us like if you want to do a longer podcast or a shorter podcast. Remember, this is just a test run, and we happen to um go back to other topics, but I think it's fine. If we wanna, if we wanna keep discussing, I, you kind of gave me a lot of uh thought with uh the similarities between Seko and uh. uh yeah, but I think um we can keep that for another podcast because. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We almost hit ninety minutes and I mean between you and me I kinda don't have any more time. Okay. Yeah, so if um if nobody I mean, wants to add anything, I will like end it here. Wait, wait, wait. I just have one more thing. Alright, go ahead. So I was kind of confused when Bonar lost his stunt and was able to go tell. I mean, he did say that 
he barely can clinch on to the Tota's body and the Tota lost all of, all of his stand ability back. Yeah, I mean, it's like stand stand power for you. Um, the saddest thing but is like, wait, I think I we mean... have to remind ourselves of is that Coco Jumbo died. And I find it very sad. Because our turtle like just died because it got trapped so it's a corner ref. I don't know what you guys think about Coco that, Jumbo. but Coco Jumbo is, is like dead and it hit me kinda hard because it was just a turtle transporting the boys everywhere and then he got swept her. So Wait, the turtle died? Yes, the turtle died. I know this is hard, but like it got trapped souls with Ponoref and since Ponoref's body is dead, the soul of Coco Jumbo is like also dead. Oh so, my yeah, god. Yeah, that's sad. That, huh? Wait, that reminds me. Coco Jumbo, he is a stand user, right? Yes. His, his ability to, uh, to, to, like, do the whole, uh, key thing, keep items inside the key, is his stand. Yes. Would that not also stop being a thing, stop uh, being a power once Jumbo had died. Well, um, Pointer of Technically keeps the ability of Coco Jumbo, I think. Um, he keeps a stand. But, but wait, wait, wait. He keeps Isn't the a stand, stand. But he's not the user of the stand. But then the user. Like, wait, the I user mean. Isn't, isn't a stand. Isn't a stand a manifestation of self will? Like, even if you died, your your soul can ca can carry on that will, and it ca and it can manifest the stand. Oh my God, Coco Jumbo yeah. is just like uh, Carne. Yeah. But you mean also, like the IG with notorious chase. After part five, we don't see anyone entering the turtle anymore, so we don't know if he can still let people enter or not. But I think like um. Corner of the ghost resides within the turtle, then, if I remember correctly. I mean, we'll see if the Piat that scene is in the future. You know, maybe to add that. Yeah, but we have to remind ourselves that Coco Jumbo died for Corner Yeah. F in the chat. Yeah, F in Jumbo. the comments on Coco Jumbo. Like, I only noticed it because I saw a meme on shit post Crusaders, and it was like when you realize that Coco Jumbo died, and I was like, wait, did he die? And I was like, oh shit, I didn't even think about that. It was like sad that he died. Hold on, did he die? Did he die peacefully? It yeah, was, it was like, an instant death, right? Yeah. Like, uh, Coco Jumbo's soul just carried on uh, to the afterlife. Just after Polnareff uh, swapped his soul with uh, the body of the turtle. Yeah, my headcanon is that Narantia, Bakio, and all the other people who died in part 5 are in heaven now with Coco Jumbo and they're like all together peacefully watching the gang from above. And when Coco yeah. Jumbo went to heaven, they were like, holy shit, what the fuck are you doing here? And then Les Rogers like, hey, it's that weird turtle, the turtle fucking died. For Scooter just so like, they were like hey, that aren't you the reason why we died? That's That was probably the reaction. Yeah, that's my personal headcanon. So yeah, F for Coco Jumbo, the best sand user in JoJo. The speed wagon exactly. of um speed wagons. Uh, the speed wagon Coco of Ashiona. Uh, exactly. exactly. Coco Jumbo is a better animal mascot than Iggy. Don't at me. Yeah. Also, remember JoJo, the the anime where you can get a stand if you have a strong will, where like. Suits can get a stand, animals can get a stand, a transmission tower can get a stand, but like Jotaro's mom can't get a stand because her resolve is too weak, but a fucking I mean, turtle can get a stand. You... Wait, 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 but I just thought about something. Uh, Jotaro's mom, how do I say? Her stand was too strong to control. 
she was That's why she really couldn't. Heart. No, her her resolve power. was weak. No, no, she couldn't handle the stand. Yeah, but, but keep in mind we have like we have a turtle with her stand. We have a fucking transmission tower with her stand. Maybe the best maybe meme. because like I, I didn't mean to go into discussion here. Like it's just a meme. It was a meme, but we it's a meme that has been plaguing. But my what's mind still for confusing years. me is is how uh is how Polinar if Pol uh, lost his control to stand and his soul and his will is still there and he and he could he could carry on with controlling his stand. Well, I think it just works. It's Jojo logic. Yeah, maybe it you're right. Works. Um, so if nobody of you wants to add anything, I would end the podcast here because we're going to hit 90 minutes very soon. No. Um, okay. So to the viewers, um, if you got any feedback or anything else you want us to you want to write so we can perform better the next time, put a comment down below. Um, you might also want to add a timestamp so we can know um, which part of the video you mean. And um, please also leave a comment if you want us to continue this um, podcast or not because um, you know it takes some preparation and we always have to get together at a certain point and make sure that everyone has time. I was also thinking about switching um, the cast members but yeah it's up to you so leave a comment and then well it's time to end <laughs>